All right. When you open your Fusion 360 for the first time, there are a couple of things that you should do before you get started. The first thing is if you look over here in the corner, this is your 3D orientation. And you can see that I have Y axis up, which is not the best option. Uh, typically, we think of the XY plane, right, as the flat surface, and the Z axis is the third dimension moving up or vertically in space. This is not oriented that way. That means that my entire uh, board is not oriented that way. To fix that, we need to go up to the corner to Preferences, and this default modeling orientation needs to get switched to Z up. All right, so we definitely want to do that. We want to, let's see, your five minute recovery time is fine. The rest of this should be fine. Um, we want to definitely apply that Z up change. And we also want to go to our unit and value display. This is fine. Um, decimal display is fine. And we want uh, everything for metric. So that should work for us. And these are all of our defaults. Um, our default units for design should definitely be millimeters. You have other options here, but use millimeters. That's the scale of accuracy that we need for our projects. Uh, the other ones won't matter for us for now. So make sure that you have your under general Z up, you have applied it and then click OK. And then you will see this is not changing on its own. All right, so we're going to close that and it will create a new file and the new one will have your Z up, which is what we want. Now, you can also have the affirmation of that by noticing that the red and the green axes are here and the red is the X and the Y is the green and the blue, therefore, is the up. All right. When you're using your orientation cube, if you need a direct 90 degree view looking straight down or straight at the back, right, you can get that by clicking on the surface. So right now we're looking flat down on a surface. Um, typically, if you're working in three-dimensional space, it may be easier to function from a three-quarter view. So you get a bit of an angle and you can see the three dimensions. So that's getting set up. The next thing that you want to do anytime you start, notice the untitled. You need to save your file. Save your file before you get started. Now, the location might actually matter if you'd like to be organized. You don't currently have a folder. Let's go, actually, before I save this, let me cancel this, let me show you where to look at all of your files or where your files will be when you have more to look at. This data panel, show data panel, that little square right there, this is where all of your files are going to show up. So you no doubt have a master folder. It starts with that. All right, I can back up. You will see that I have tried. <laughs> to be organized in that my 15, 16 files, my 2016 fall files, then things kind of go all over the place. Um, let's in fact start with a new folder and I can even try 2017, 2018, oops, get a dash in there, files and these are for DF9, just for whatever for you guys. There we go. So now I have a folder I can put all this stuff in. And then when I go, whoops, go back. When I go to save this, I can save and I can save it into that doo -doo 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 folder. Now I can have subfolders, I could do it by project. Whatever makes sense for you, you go right ahead and do. 
This is going to be um, intro demo oops, screencast. So I know why I made it and what it's for. And I can save that. Now, the good news is, once you save it once and give it a name, it can save automatically every five minutes. This will save your life. Because you all know everybody has a tendency to keep working and working, and then everything freezes or quits, and you just lost an hour's worth of work. So, your best habit, open a file, save the file, then start working. Okay, so that said, I'm going to just have this over here on the side. As soon as I start to build something and it saves a version, I'll see that graphic over here. In fact, let me show you what that looks like in, maybe they're in here somewhere. Nope. So much for previous organization. Hmm. Oh, heavens, we'll use this one. To open the file. And the file is there. Okay. There we go. So it'll be just as easy for you to go in and work with past files from here. No problem. All right. Back here. Back to this one. We'll start from scratch because you guys still don't have anything yet. See if it's going to. Oh, we'll just flip back here. Great. Yay, tabs. Um, okay, so while we're here, let's do a brief orientation. There is up here, you have some uh, some controls, some tools, some things to look at. Um, you may end up using this. We have some export files. Um, you might want to share something if you want to share the file, if you're working on a collaborative work, um, all kinds of options. Um, oh, this is depending on what you want to see, your windows, no problem. Uh, on the other hand, most of your tools are going to be down here as well. So we can export, we can share, 3D print, same idea, same kinds of things you've got up here are right here. This will save the version that you're working on. So you can save at any point along the way. Um, you can also make copies of things if you're working on something and you want to try something but you don't want to screw up a file and you don't want to have to go back and like undo to redo, you can make versions of files. So feel free to have like four or five different versions of it as you experiment with different things. You can undo and redo from up here but you will also find as soon as we start building things there'll be a history down here in the bottom bar that you can work from as well. Okay. Now, I'm going to get rid of my data panel because it takes up space and it's kind of annoying. And unless I'm trying to uh, work with multiple versions of a file or different files, I don't really need it. Okie doke. So, first things first, these are the different sort of modes that you can work in. Sheet Metal is brand new, very exciting. Um, we are primarily working in the model space. At some point, you will be exporting a drawing, but that's after you've done your design. So we're going to work with model right now. We will eventually also work with render, but later. So model. You have some options in the model mode for how you make your objects. One of which is sketch. We'll talk about that later. In the create version, right now the create version in the blue, we can make components from what are called primitives. A box, a cylinder, a sphere, a torus, a pipe. Pretty much, if you start with box, cylinder, sphere, then we can do some more interesting things. But I would say start with these to, to sort of get things up and running. We can then extrude, pull something out or push something in, because you can extrude in the negative direction. You can revolve or move something around, right, on, around an axis. Sweeping is kind of fun along uh, a, either uh, a sketch profile, so a line or a path. Um, lofting will take you from one shape to another or one size shape to another. Um, ribs and webs we'll worry about later. Uh, don't use hole for now. 
Instead, think about using a cylinder to put a hole in something, if that's what you need. Uh, so those are the ones we're going to use primarily. Um, the second component, if you're working on the purple side, on the sculpt side, it's a totally different environment, and I'll come back and show you more about this later. I'm going to just click OK. And I'm going to finish this form because I'm not going to work in the sculpt environment right now. We're going to start from create. So uh, modify, you guys are going to use a lot of these. Press pull frequently. Fillet and chamfer is how to deal with corners so that they're more interesting than you can take a box and make it something a little more sophisticated. Shell you're going to use if you need to make something hollow. Uh, combining we use a lot to either join, put holes in things, um, any number of things. Split body will allow us to cut something apart. And those are pretty much... Oh, and move, copy, and align you're going to use a lot, definitely. Okay, so those are the big ones. Uh, that and creating an offset plane or plane somewhere in this range. Some of these planes. Making those planes let us construct things later. So those are the bit sort of big things we're going to play with to start with. Um, the other things that I would say, and then I'll wrap this orientation screencast up, is that you definitely want to see how you can move your browser and have it either showing or not showing. Leave it showing. You're going to need all of these things uh, eventually. When we start to build things, you will have bodies and uh, sketches, and you definitely want to be able to see them. So keep that uh, keep that visible, and then as we build things, you'll see more dialogue uh, interfaces like this. Leave them up, or if you don't see them right away, go looking for something over on the side that might have that information that you can then pop out. Don't leave my comments. Okie dokie. Uh, that's it for the orientation. Make sure you set up your Z axis up and that you are functioning in millimeters. And then we'll move on to screencast number two. Thanks.